Have you ever wondered why modern high performance laptops are so enormous like the 16 inch M2 Max MacBook Pro? Well, what if I told you that 30 years ago, high performance laptops looked like this? That's right, things have definitely changed a lot in the past 35 years or so that laptops have been a thing. But something that I think most people overlook is how accustomed we are to large laptops, particularly when we want them to be fast. In fact, one of the biggest achievements in moving to Apple Silicon was the 14 inch MacBook Pro. This is the first time Apple has offered the same level of performance in a small form factor as they do in their largest device, the 16 inch MacBook Pro. Or at least it's the first time this century because rewind back to the 1990s and it wasn't like this. The early 90s was all about portability. Older laptops like the Macintosh Portable were anything but, coming in at 16 pounds and nearly $16,000. So the new breed of PowerBooks were determined to get things right just like today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by UPDF, the ultimate tool to read, annotate, edit, convert, protect, reduce size, sign and organize PDFs, fill out forms and combine files into one PDF. Holy cow, that's a lot. The best part is UPDF gives you access to all of those great features, whether you're on Mac OS, Windows, iOS, or Android, all with one license, giving you unprecedented versatility and 10 gigabytes of free cloud storage included. Being able to freely modify PDFs across your devices adds a level of flexibility to your documents. It's super easy to move page elements, add or remove text, create entirely new text sections, and even annotate existing documents. You can also use OCR text recognition to modify non-rich PDFs, not to mention the ability to convert to loads of different file types and built-in organization features. Right now, UPDF is offering an exclusive discount of 54% with the link in the description below. A big thanks to UPDF for sponsoring this video, and now let's get back to it. This is the first generation PowerBook. Specifically, this is a PowerBook 165, which came out a little bit later. But you'll notice in terms of form factor, it's quite similar to today's 14 inch MacBook Pro. In fact, despite being 30 years apart, the form factor and the layout of these devices is pretty much the same. This is basically the world's first modern laptop design. The PowerBook 100 series were the first laptops to feature a palm rest in front of the keyboard so you had somewhere to rest your wrists. But of course, despite their similar footprints, this PowerBook is a lot thicker and thanks in large part to nickel cadmium batteries, it's a lot heavier. The PowerBook 165 weighs in at 6.8 pounds compared to the MacBook Pro's 3.6. However, as the 90s wore on, these things weren't getting any heavier. Just a year after the PowerBook 100 series came out, Apple launched this absolutely beautiful little nugget of a computer. It's the PowerBook Duo, and you can kind of think of this as the 12 inch MacBook of its day. It has almost no IO on the back. If you flip down the legs at the back, it reveals a modem port and a serial port, but everything else is through this interface. There's a little trap door in the middle, and that brings up the duo aspect of these power books. Basically, you plug this in to a wide range of accessories, including one that turns it into a full-blown desktop. And that was the thing that was so clever about this design in 1992. It has almost the exact same level of performance as the larger PowerBook models, and instead it just sort of outsources IO and connectivity to accessories, which allows it to be this small. Now, of course, there were some compromises. If you wanted to get internet on this thing, you basically just had to use Apple Talk, which was very, very slow. The docking accessories were expensive. The keyboard is just 88% size, which makes it quite difficult to type on. The screen is very small and surrounded by enormous bezels. And they even had to miniaturize the trackball and recess it into the palm rest to prevent you needing these larger bezels on the front of the display. 
So compromises were made, sure, but this is 4.1 pounds. That is crazy. And this guy is smaller in footprint than even the MacBook Air. Look at how tiny this laptop is. In 1992, this was, by a long way, the smallest laptop in the world. Even to this day, it remains one of the smallest Apple laptops ever made. It must have been crazy to see this thing come out 30 years ago. It must be kind of like watching Apple unveil the mixed reality headset at WWDC 2023 and then the next day going to a live event called Genius Bar Goes Dark, an exclusive one night only live show held at the Regency Ballroom and brought to you by Clean My Mac X. Probably something like that, I bet. Genius Bar Goes Dark is brought to you guys by Clean My Mac. They've been a huge supporter of the channel for years and have helped keep my Mac clean and organized with their killer features like Space Lens. See where all your files are and clean them up easily. Anyways, grab your tickets with the link in the description below. I'm so excited to see you guys there. And now let's get back to the video. If we fast forward to the late 90s as the PowerPC transition is underway, the PowerBook G3 really, uh, ups the ante a little bit. This is no longer the slim svelte PowerBook Duo. This guy has a 14 inch display and as you can tell, has grown substantially compared to the original PowerBook 100 series. Now that's not to say that the advancements being made here weren't significant. This design introduces a lot of really cool things. Like for example, it has dual upgrade bays. So you can pop out the battery and the optical drive. You can put dual batteries. You can put all sorts of expansion modules in here. It's got a large, very good display for the late 90s. But all of these things, just increase the size of these devices. I mean, look at them next to each other. It's not even close. But you gotta remember that when we're talking about the late 90s and the early 2000s, most laptops were using LCDs and most desktops were using CRTs. By the early 2000s, we get one of the best Apple laptops ever made, in my opinion, and that's the PowerBook G4 Titanium. This is where things start to look really, really modern. I mean, you wouldn't be able to tell that these are just 10 years apart. But these advanced LCD panels allowed Apple to do something which today would be very unusual. They shared panels between iMacs and PowerBooks. And that's some context that I think is very important. In modern times, if you want a large screen, it's very easy to do that with a desktop. But back in the early 2000s, desktops and laptops we're sharing the panels. Like you couldn't get that many large screens. And so when 17 inch laptops became a thing, they were huge physically and sales wise. But if I'm honest, things are starting to get a little bit out of hand. Once you get to the mid 2000s, the late 2000s, laptops are pretty big. And obviously in the world of Apple, they're all, you know, aluminum and minimal and very pretty, but in the PC world, things were not looking too hot in the late 2000s. I mean, this is when those gigantic, hideous Alienware things started to get very popular. And this is when we all started realizing, hey, why, why are we doing this? Why do we need laptops that are this huge and this heavy? We start to see this trend reversal, the PowerBook Duo coming back from the dead. And that brings us pretty neatly back to the present. Today's MacBook Air, which is much more similar in footprint to the early 1990s than it was to the mid 2000s. Because priorities have shifted again. Whereas back in the early 90s with these 68K processors that don't actually need any fans, this thing is completely passively cooled, this was all about portability. It was about getting your work done and having it on the go. Obviously, there are a lot of factors that determine what people want from their devices, but I think where we are right now, there is a decided focus on portability. That's why consistently across the board, the 16 inch MacBook Pro is not people's top pick. If I read through my comment section or put a poll up on Twitter, it is an overwhelming decision, frankly, that people would rather have a 14 inch or a 13 inch laptop or even a 15 inch. It's funny to think that we're basically back where we started 30 years ago, but I think that Apple was on the right track then 
and now. But I'm curious to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments below. And of course, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.